What is up you guys? Welcome back to our channel. Um, so it's just me today. Taylor is at school. Um, he couldn't come back this week so I thought it would be a great time to film a little girl talk with you guys. So I posted on my Instagram story a couple days ago. I let everyone know that I was going to be filming this and to ask me some girl talk questions and you guys did. So if you don't follow us on Instagram make sure you do that so you can be a part of our future videos. So yeah we're just going to get started and I'm, I haven't looked through the questions yet so I'm just gonna kind of bring them up as we go and answer as many questions, give my advice, give my opinion on as many girly things. So, okay, first one is, I got a couple of these as I'm looking, um, self tanner question mark. So right now, whatever tan I have now is from the tanning bed, but typically I use self tanner and I use the Bali Body Ultra Dark Foam. So I just put it on a little mitt and put it on and I put it on, I've never put it on any other time during the day except for at night and I sleep in it and then I rinse it the next morning. So I don't have like a certain set of hours, but I definitely like to let it sit all night long. So yeah, that's what I use. And then for my face, it kind of goes back and forth. I haven't figured out a great self tanning routine for my face yet, just because, you know, if I put it everywhere, then I wake up and I look like I have a mustache, all those things. So, but I do use the Bali Body. They have a face water um, and that's what I typically use. So you just have to be careful when you're putting it in certain areas. That's why I know a lot of people like put it on just the places that they would put their um put their like bronzer or contour or whatever and that's a good idea i'm just always too scared that it's gonna turn out splotchy so Bali body that's my go-to i also used to use loving tan and fake bake i on it's been so long since i used them so i can't remember i think loving tan was good it was like a foam and then fake bake i used like some spray so i don't really remember if i like that one but Bali body is what i use okay someone asked when did you start your period so i'm like an open book when it comes to periods i've started talking about periods before to people and they like get all freaked out and I'm like oh I didn't realize that was a thing that really freaked people out but it's never really been like an awkward topic for me um I started my period when I was 11 so I feel like that's honestly on the younger side I mean I know it's not I think that's on the younger side out of my whole friend group like my friends were always a couple years older than me and I started before everyone it was really funny but someone also asked what my first period story was and so I was gonna share that so I was a dancer my whole life from two up until 17 or 18 and a ballet dancer. And so if you know anything about what the ballet attire is, it's like pink tights and a leotard, which is basically like a bodysuit. And you know, you can wear skirts sometimes if you want, but basically if you kick your leg up, you know, there's no like, sh you're not wearing shorts. Um, and so I remember I was in ballet class and I didn't feel anything. I don't know if most people do, but we were stretching and I remember like I put my head over and I was like, what is that? So I guess my leotard, oh, it was pink. It was like a really light, light pink leotard. If it were black, I probably wouldn't have seen it. It was, a really, it was like this light color. It wasn't like it was TMI. It wasn't like it was like a bright red blood color. And so I was like, what? is that? And so I went to the bathroom and I had, I remember not knowing. I was like, is this my period? What is this? Because if you're a girl, you know, it's, it's not always, you know. And so I was like, I'm confused, but I had a whole day of dance ahead. And I was like, what am I going to do? And so I remember I was only 11. So my mom picked me and my friend up and I was like, I think I got my period. I don't know. And she was like, you definitely did. And so I wore shorts, which was like, I remember that whole day. I was like, oh my gosh, people are gonna think I'm so weird. to have shorts on, but it was just like, there's always like ballet cover up shorts. And so had those on the whole day and then came home and learned all the things. And from there, we're going on a couple years, well, a lot of years strong. So that's my little story. I've never had like complications with my period or anything. I'm like on the most, I keep telling Taylor, I'm like, when we get married and we start trying to have kids I have a feeling which I'm very grateful for I still don't know but I just have a feeling that it's gonna happen easily I just my cycles are like to the T exactly when everything says it's supposed to be it is so like I'm just I have a feeling things are gonna things are gonna happen fast we'll see someone said do you think pads or tampons are better I don't think either one is necessarily better personally I'm a more tampon I used to do like a mixture of both like I used to sleep in with a pad and stuff sometimes I double up just in case you know we don't want to have any problems but there's no better option honestly are you on birth control no I'm not I don't plan to ever be on birth control so right now there's obviously no need for birth control but I know a lot of you know girls 
girls have period complications, things like, like, like my sister's on birth control because she, you know, her cramps are and her periods are regular, so it just helps regulate things. But like I said, I've never had any problems like that. And then when we get married, you know, you know, I'm not trying to prevent nothing. And then once we're done having kids, one of us will, well, not one of us, Taylor, sweet Taylor, will probably have a surgery and get that knocked out. And so I don't plan to ever be on birth control. So yeah, someone said worst period story. Sorry, so much period talk. Um, I feel like that's the go-to girl talk thing, but worst period story. I can't think of one, but I'll come back to that if something comes to mind. I honestly don't have anything crazy that I can think of. So honestly, just besides, actually, you know what? The worst things were probably, again, dance. Like when I say pink tights, they're basically see-through, like your ballet tights. And so, you know, you if you, you know, start bleeding, it's all over and you can see. So there have been like basically every month when I would get my period, I'd have some sort of like disaster at ballet and I would just have to know to like bring an extra pair. So nothing like crazy, crazy, but I would always run into that issue. Another period question, um, does your heart condition affect your period? It doesn't. Um, like I said, it's been so regular, so it has not affected it at all. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we posted a video explaining I have a heart condition. We explained all the things about that if you wanna go watch it, it's like too bad but it does not affect it. Someone said, do you tan in the tanning bed? If so, what are things you suggest doing? So this is not something that I'm gonna get on here and recommend to everyone. Honestly, the tanning bed concerns me a little bit. So I said earlier in the beginning of the video, this is a tanning bed tan. So because of the wedding, I'm too paranoid to have a spray tan. I don't want it to get everywhere. I don't like the smell of spray tans. I'm worried about being splotchy afterwards for the honeymoon. I'm extra like that now. Everything. So I was like, I want to get a natural tan and it's February or it's February 1st today. So I'm like, I don't have any kind of summer tan. There's no sun out. I'm like, only option is the tanning bed. And so I'm not going to sit here and recommend it to everyone. I don't think it's the best option. I mean, even self tanner has like chemicals and stuff in it, but I know tanning bed is like the worst. But what are things you suggest doing? I wear a, a lotion in the tanning bed. I would definitely recommend doing that because if not, honestly, they say if you lay without a lotion, it's not going to do much. So you're just laying and you're not even getting a tan. So I would definitely recommend a lotion and it helps you not burn. Start, if you're starting, like start on the lowest time you can. Like when I first got in, I did three minutes. Then the next time I did four minutes. Then I did five minutes. Then I did six. And now I'm at like 25. It also depends on what tanning bed you're in. Like we have a tanning bed at our house in our garage and it's a 30 minute tanning bed. So, you know, once you build your way up, you can lay in it for 30 minutes. But there's some tanning beds. Like I go to one um, at Taylor school inside the gym and it's a 12 minute bed. So the bulbs are way stronger. So you just need to make sure you know, so you don't go, they won't let you since it's at a gym, they won't let you lay longer than, you know, you're supposed to, but you want to start off really, really low and build your way up. So you don't get in there and like burn. But again, don't take it from me. I don't honestly recommend it. So I'm doing something really bad right now. I'm not doing it after the wedding and I don't really recommend it, but that's just my um, advice. Someone said, I'm also engaged. What sort of intimate things do you plan to bring on your honeymoon? So congratulations, engagement is so fun. Intimate things do I plan to bring on my honeymoon? So when I had my bachelorette trip, we went on a cruise. We had a little, the girls threw me like a lingerie shower and I was so nervous to do it. I was like, should I do that? I don't know. But they did that for me and they just got me things that are nothing crazy, you know. That's not really my vibe, I don't think. So they, you know, they got me like nice little set and things like that. So I'll probably pack a few of those. And they're things that just can be worn like, you know, under your clothing, nothing crazy. I just wouldn't be able to do that. Not my thing. So I'm going to pack a few of those and see, see what happens. Details on how you get your nails done. So I'm no like nail expert. I get something different like every time. I just got them done today and I got, this is oval shape and this is just, this is SNS. I usually get acrylic, but this is SNS. I wanted to try it because it's, it's a lot thinner than acrylic is and I'm starting to like that but I remember I got SNS one time and it chipped really easy because of how thin it was so I'll keep you guys updated on how I like this but I typically do oval or I do square with the corners round which is called like squoval or something I don't know the correct term but it's either one of those square with the corners round that's a little bit more casual but if I want a little bit more fancier I feel like the oval is what I go with do you want to breastfeed your kids yes for sure how often do you wash and use dry shampoo on your hair I 
I try to go as long as I can without washing it. I hate my hair on the first day of it being clean. Like my clean hair, it's flat, it looks terrible. I love when my hair has dry shampoo in it and it's getting dirty. That's my favorite. <laughs> so even on the day that I just washed my hair, I put dry shampoo in it because I want it to like fluff up. So I use dry shampoo every day and then I wash it probably every three days. Sometimes I'll push it. Like if I know I'm just gonna be in the house all day, I'll be like, I'll just leave it. But yeah, with it being brown at the top, grease shows so much more with brown hair rather than like light hair. So I've got to wash it. Are you ready for the night after the wedding or nervous? I'm ready. Best razor or any hacks to avoid getting red bumps down there when shaving. So I never found a solution to this. So I am currently getting laser hair removal. I'm getting it under my arms, my legs, and my bikini line. So I'm just doing my bikini line because that's where I struggled with like razor burn and stuff. I have no tips for this one. I really don't. I, you know, I see so many things that are for sale all the time that are supposed to help it. And I just have not a clue. Like, I think it's just such an, it's just a normal natural thing. So it's not something to be like, upset about everyone has it like I, I look on social media I'm like well they don't seem to have it but in real life everyone does um but I was just I'm very thankful that I can get laser and that should take care of that so that's something to look into one day it can be pricey but for a small area it's gonna be cheaper like your whole legs for instance that could be really expensive but you could look into something like that one day how early do you want to get pregnant after you're married? Early. All right, I'll answer like two more. Do you prefer shaving or waxing? I've never waxed before, so I'm gonna say shaving. Was the first kiss awkward? No, it wasn't awkward. I don't remember it being awkward at all. What was awkward was like more like first date, just like, we talk about but by the time we kissed it wasn't awkward okay well I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long Taylor will see me post this and be like girl so I'm gonna cut it off here but I can always do a part two so if you guys want to see that or you have a lot of questions that I didn't answer because I feel like I feel like I answer a lot but I feel like I didn't have time to answer that many so if you want a part two let me know and I also think it'd be funny if we could get Taylor on here and do a guy talk let me know if you want to see that um but Taylor will be back we'll be back to our regular schedule both of us um in front of the camera so stay tuned for that make sure to follow us on instagram if you want to be a part of our future videos and we love you guys so much and we'll see you in the next one bye